everyone. Uh, my name is Sydney Jones, and I'm the Student Programs Coordinator here at the National Council on U.S. Arab Relations. I hope you're all enjoying your lunch um, or dessert at this point. I'm not really sure where you're at, but um, I just want to start by thanking you all for being here today. Uh, the National Council has one mission, and that's to educate the public on the Arab region in hopes that we can strengthen the relationship between the United States and the Arab world. And we're able to do that through various programs that we offer. And so at this time, I would like to highlight some of the students that have participated in our programs. And these students, they come from all different walks of life. They have different hobbies, they had different majors in school, everything in between. But one thing that they do have in common is their desire to strengthen the relationship between the United States and the Arab region. So without, before I introduce these students though, I do want to let you know that we do have donation forms at each table. If you feel so inclined in helping these programs continue to flourish, um, please just feel free to raise it up and we have staff that's walking around. We'll be happy to come and collect it from you. Um, without further ado, please join me in welcoming our first student speaker, Alex Carlin. Thank you very much, Sydney, and thank you all, uh, and thank you to our distinguished guests. I'm very happy to be here speaking to you all to talk about my experiences with the National Council. Uh, but first and foremost, I feel it's important to say what makes the National Council so special, and that is the students the professors who put all the hard work in to make it work each year in and out, the staff of the National Council, and of course, John Duke Anthony for the work that he does. This program would not function in the way it has for so long without his expertise, his leadership, his connections in the Middle East, and the work that he continues to do. As for myself, I am lucky enough to have been a graduate of many of the National Council's programs throughout my time at Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. I participated in several of the Council's summits, uh, debating with fellow students from across the country and across the world. I have led some of these summits as both a head delegate, leading my fellow students, as well as as a conference coordinator, encouraging other schools to get involved and widening the net of individuals who are bettered and learn of the Arab world through the National Council's programming. I was also lucky enough to travel with the Council to the Middle East, along with John Duke Anthony himself, uh, to experience firsthand how the Arab world works, how policy is made, and how decisions are made at the highest of levels. Each of these experiences have greatly benefited me personally. Uh, over the course of my career uh, at Northeastern and then after graduation, I have regularly called upon the skills that I learned through the National Council to better myself and to participate in the working world. I've been lucky enough to work in the U.S. Congress under then Minority Leader, now Speaker Pelosi. I was able to undertake study in the U.N. in Geneva under UNIDIR, the United Nations Disarmament Institute of Research, as well as study abroad in New Zealand, uh, research projects in Romania and Hungary and Tunisia. So quite a lot I've been able to accomplish in part because of the National Council. And I'm grateful to them every day. And I believe that this work should, uh, as much as possible, continue. I am just a small example of the great work and the great work that continues to be done by students and recipients of these programs. I personally know of individuals who are currently, having graduated from these programs, now walk the halls of Congress, work in the State Department, in the United Nations, across all our uh, branches of our armed services, Google, Facebook, the White House, and many, many more. The future of uh, the United States and global Arab policy is being shaped in part by the National Council, and I would encourage you to continue to support it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alex. Next, I'm going to call Michael Gallagher up. Hi. Um, my name is Michael Gallagher. And I am a student uh, of Arabic and Middle Eastern studies, as well as international relations. And I guess where I start was um, I'm a former intern for the National Council, as well as a um, graduate, as he called it, of the Model Arab League program. Now, I think to really encompass what the National Council is all about, it kind of 
explains itself when you know where I'm from. Now, I'm from a small town in northeastern Nevada in a place where nobody's ever heard of and never will. And through that, I found myself in my entire youth, uh, no one really from my community knows anything about the Middle East or even the rest of Nevada itself. So global politics or US politics or anything in accordance of that was never a part of the plan of our lives. But I had the unique opportunity of studying um, at my university in Maryland. Though it's small, we have a very strong Arabic program. And through that, and through the guidance of one of my professors to use um, the National Council's uh, Model Arab League program, I combined the efforts of the learning processes of language and culture and politics and regional dynamics to uh, really drive myself towards eventually traveling to the region myself. I was tired of reading about it in books and things like that and only seeing it secondhand. So I decided one summer to spend my entire uh, uh, break um, working and living in Palestine. And through that, I got to see a facet of the Middle East that very few people ever end up getting to see. And it was unique to understand the plight of certain individuals who don't necessarily have the privileges that we do. And a lot of that's due to what the National Council did for me. It gave me the opportunity to learn more about the dynamics of politics and drove me to do that. And so that brings me to this previous summer where I ended up, <laughs> I'm a very lucky man, and <laughs> let me just start with that. I applied for the National Council's internship program um, for this previous summer, and I ended up getting it. And when it says it's an intensive summer program about learning about the Gulf dynamics, well, intense is a proper word to use with two times a week lectures with Dr. Anthony or guest speakers, such as many of you in this room, learning about the region itself and in such a, like, meticulous understanding every single person in every single way it works, I had the opportunity of like knowing more than anyone my age. I'm only 21 years old and I feel like some of my professors don't know quite as much about the region itself. And so I think the National Council, uh, oh, not to mention, I'm a especially lucky man because because of Prince Turkey and his program, Gateway KSA, I was able to travel to Saudi Arabia back in September. And it was a, yeah, no, honestly, all props to him and the Gateway crew. They, along with the National Council, have educated me beyond imagine. And being able to experience the world firsthand while also learning about it in an academic sense is what really I think the National Council is all about and has benefited me. And I have to say thank you to the National Council, as well as thank you to everyone in this room who continues to support the National Council and all that they do. And hopefully you continue supporting it so more people like me from small town America can make a broader impact in the world. Thank you. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maadi Asiri. I am a master's degree student in international affairs at the Catholic University of America. In addition to my academic studies, I am lucky to be a national council intern. My internship has provided me countless opportunities to help me become a better person. The internship has not only helped to me to develop my uh, knowledge and understanding of foreign relations, it has also helped to me to realize the, realize the uh, improvement uh, diplomacy uh, in matters related to war and peace. Coming as I do from the Arab region, being able to improve these and other skills is of a great importance to me. One of the greatest strengths of what the Council does is how it helps prepare today the leaders of tomorrow. I am very much to be want, want to be uh, such a leader 
Dr. Anthony, thank you, and the National Council for everything you have done for me. Okay, I'd now like to welcome Nora Arwadan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to introduce myself to you today. I'm Noura Zaid al Roydan. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I hold a master's degree in sociology from Mohammed ibn Saud University. And I'm a student PhD program in crime of sociology at Prince Naif University for security studies. And also I hold master's degree from Catholic University in, in International Affairs. When I was an undergraduate student, I read The Clash of Civilization by Samuel Hentigan, who described the culture as a source of global conflict. His vision and its relationship to conflict stems from the idea that culture are diverse, and each culture will seek to improve its superiority over others. I have a personal view and approach to the importance of differences in culture. And in the reproachment of civilization, the outlandish thought that differences end up causing conflict is not true, and it is not something to go by. Where there are differences in ideologies, people end up learning from each other, as well as borrowing a leaf from each other's idea. I would therefore reiterate that diverse ideas and culture bring more understanding between society and appreciation of the contrasts that are there to make the world a beautiful place. We all would find it's boring to live in place where everyone thinks and behaves in the same manner. The variety in culture have in fact provided a common ground for dealing with the matters that affect our society. Even though we have different culture between East and West, still have a lot in common that we can think about and work through as a health, education, human rights, art, and world peace. I therefore stand here today with the National Council coining on the importance of togetherness, harmony, and cooperation in making our place a better place to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. Our next student speaker is Mohammed Sagar. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, my name is Mohammed Al Sagar. I'm a graduate student in the University of Miami, majoring in finance. I might look familiar to some of you as uh, 359 days ago, I took the same stage to convey an important message, which was to support the National Council in US and Arab Relations Educational uh, Mission. I was uh, lucky enough to, to have had the summer internship program in, uh, from, from May to August of 2018, which was very beneficial. During my time there as an intern, I gained valuable, no I gained valuable knowledge about the historical, strategical, and multilateral relationship between the US and the GCC countries, as a long-lasting, solid relationship which dates back to decades. Throughout the internship program, we had the opportunity to sit on lectures on the GCC twice a week, at the Elite School of International Affairs at the George Washington University, 
taught by yours truly, Dr. John Duke Anthony, and some guest speakers, which were very beneficial and very great speakers. Since I completed my internship in 2018, almost a year and a half ago, a great deal has changed and happened in terms of regional developments in US GCC bilateral relationship, bilateral relationships. The Council's vision is to educate America about the GCC and vice versa. Keeps getting stronger by the day, stronger by the day, and I encourage everyone to, con to, to continue supporting the cause and mission of the National Council as for the uh, good cause. Thank you, Dr. John, Pat, Sydney, Roland, Mark, and Emily. Thank you, Mohammed. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to welcome Yasmin Ali to the podium. Your Highnesses, esteemed guests, and to the staff here at the National Council, my name is Yasmin Ali, and I would like to first and foremost extend my utmost gratitude to the staff of the National Council for giving me this unparalleled opportunity to be able to address a room filled with role models and leaders. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Sydney, who has become not only a friend but a mentor for me. Sydney, alongside the staff of the council, have truly opened countless doors for me through study trips to the region or last semester an internship with the USA Pavilion for the World Expo 2020 in Dubai. At my first day at the National Council, Dr. John Duke Anthony embedded in me what I believe to be one of the most important frames of reference for conducting and analyzing policy in the Middle East, that being empathy. It is with empathy he emphasizes that us, as both students and future leaders, can transcend beyond governments, popular misconceptions, and personalities in geopolitics, and understand that underneath these many layers lie people. My experience two summers ago with the National Council continuously empowered its interns through what Dr. Anthony also emphasized to be two of the most pivotal um, measures in measuring success, that being knowledge and experiences. Whether it be through powerful guest speakers or site visits to the Embassy of Saudi Arabia, the CIA, or even a local mosque here in DC, the council empowered me with the knowledge and experiences necessary to be able to conduct diplomacy at its most intimate levels. It empowered us with the facts to be able to counter popular misconceptions of the Middle East, Muslims, and Islam. So often this region is portrayed as something that is defined only by oil or sectarian conflict. Rather, it is the heart of culture. Poetry is highlighted by Rumi. Sociology is highlighted by the father of sociology, Ibn Khaldun, or philosophy as emphasized in the teachings of Ibn Rushd. My favorite Islamic philosopher who highlighted centuries upon centuries ago something that might come to a shock as all of us today. He highlighted the economic participation of women before any Westerner had even realized these thoughts. Therefore, the best thing that the National Council endowed me with is the knowledge. Knowledge of an unbiased history of the Middle East and a reframing of the Middle East as well. I will take with me, therefore, the knowledge, teachings, and most importantly, the power to be better and to promote morality in face of ideology. I can't emphasize enough to all of you here to continue to support the efforts of the National Council. It is as exemplified in all the students here, truly, especially at this time and this political climate, it is, more, it is not more pertinent now more than ever to invest in these programs. Thank you so very much.